Greetings. Get ready to embark on an extraordinary journey, exploring the world of Proxmox turnkey containers, to install in your Proxmox server. Since Proxmox provides many useful turnkey containers, we decided to use one, and we were pleasantly surprised. We get to install the Proxmox turnkey file server container into Proxmox. This provides both an NFS as well as a Samba file server. Running this as a Proxmox container, it is incredibly fast and versatile. So buckle up and prepare to be amazed by the brilliance of this video. Now, without further ado, allow me to introduce you to our Proxmox expert, Nico. Please note that Nico has a charming Dodecanese European accent, but fear not he speaks the Queen's English fluently. Over to you, Nico. Thank you, Josh. Hi there. Today we are going to do an interesting installation. We want to install one of the turnkey servers that Proxmox provides as a Proxmox container. Our use case is we need a backup file server in a Proxmox container. The instructions to this video can be found in our blog. This URL, we have provided a link to it down below. We recommend that you follow us while we do the installation as we want to speed up the process so we're not going to be referring to this document. We want to create a container but we want to create a container that uses the appliance provided by Proxmox. So what we need to do is we need to go into the Proxmox instance that we are selecting this instance and open the shell and run this command. PVEAN available. This is going to list all the turnkey servers that Proxmox provides us. And somewhere in there we will find the one we want. If we look around here, we should find the file server. Here it is. Here is the server we want. There it is. So we want to copy this. As we mentioned earlier, we have added extra disks to our Proxmox server and mounted the first one as VM data and we mounted the second disk as ZZ user data. This is the one with the 2 terabyte disk drive. And then by default you have local. If you haven't added disks, you have local. So we, we want to use this one. The command that we are going to run, we will show you now. So this is the command we want. So here is the drive that we have chosen, the extra 2 terabyte drive we added to the server. So it will download this file into that. And we then just run this command. We were testing this, so we've already run this command. So I'm just going to cancel this. In your case, you would run this command. And this will now add the template into your Proxmox server. Now we can continue. And now we close this, and now we can create the container. We want to call this file server, give it a suitable password, Now again we want to choose the right storage, our storage is the 2 terabyte ZZ user data and now we should find the template in here, here it is. Now you need to allocate enough disk space, we will allocate enough storage for our requirement so half a terabyte is enough for us. Now we go to the CPU. You need to allocate two cores. And we also set a CPU limit of one. 
This is so that if something happens in this container, it doesn't exceed the CPU usage that can impact the performance of our server. And then memory depends. We found that 4 gigabytes was enough. And the same for the swap. We want to give this a static IP address, so 10.154.2.86. And now you need to say forward slash 24. Notice that the next button has now become visible. Now we type our gateway 10.154.2.3. It helps if you type correct. You see, if you do something wrong, let me do something wrong. It hides, it hides the next button. That's right. Now we can continue. Again, 10.154.2.3. 8.8.8.8.1.1.1.1.1.1. You can add whatever DNS you want. And then we say finished. And it will now build this container. Looks like it's ready. Here's our server. We now need to start this container and then open the console. Let's make it big enough. It wants a Samba password, so let's give it one. Enter. Confirm. Enter. I'm going to skip the API key. If you need an API key, this is the URL that you need to go to. Press enter. We will skip this. Press enter. Our networking has been already configured, so we don't need to make a change here. If you are using an SSL certificate from Let's Encrypt, you can enter here. And if you're using a proxy server like HA proxy or whatever, uh, you need to set it up here. Otherwise, we can then say reboot. Yes. And now we log in and we're, we're basically there. There are certain configurations we need to do. At this stage, we should be able to open the server on this link here. And sign in. Once you've signed in, click on Servers, select Samba. Now before we create a new share, we need to go on the server and do that. Let's open the terminal again. Before we can continue, there are a few things we need to do. This is a new VM or a new container. We need to do an app update. Now that we've done that, we need to create the user. As you can see, we don't have sudo. There's two things we don't have. We don't have sudo, we don't have nano. That's fine. So we're going to do apt install sudo and nano dash y. And now that we've done that, we can now do the add user. I prefer to do add user than user add. Watch this. It now wants me to create the password. And confirm it. This is much better. 
You provide the user with his credentials. Room number, and this is correct, enter. We've created the user. Next, we want to add the user to the Sudoa group. This is the command we're going to run, user mod dash ig sudo and then the user. Our user now has sudo access. We can now create the folder. We need to create the folder in the root slash user data. This is what we are going to use as our Samba share. We will create this on our server and also in our Linux client. So let's create the folder. Having created the user nickname, we want to churn this folder to that user. Now that we have done that, we now can create the Samba share in our turnkey server. So let's open the turnkey server. Just to recap, you click on servers, you click on Samba Windows file share, and over here it says create a new file share. Click there, and let's call this share user data, and the folder will be the one we just created. And the owner, we can select Nick M. Or we can keep it as root. Let's keep it as root. And the group can be root. That's fine. And now we hit create. And if you look here, it says read only. So we still need to do some things to this. So click on here. And now we go to security. Writable, yes. At this point in time, everybody can access this. And let's also act, give a guest access. This depends on your requirements. You determine who can access and what can access this. For our requirements, this was good enough. Save. And then file permissions. That's fine. We are happy with the default. Save. And save. And now it says rewrite to everyone. So we've now created the Samba share. Not everybody likes to use GUIs to configure their servers. We are now going to show you how you set up the file share if you are using the terminal. We will edit the Samba configuration file. This is the command you run. In our case, there's already a user data, but if there wasn't, you would just create that. That's the file share. And we've specified that it's public and the path. There are a few more parameters we want to add to this. I'm going to paste all the parameters here and we'll remove what we already have. So let's remove these three here. Control K, 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 K. What we've done is we forced it to allow the user Nick M to connect to the share. We've also allowed the user group sudo. So all the sudoers or sudoers can now have access to this file share. And we've made it writable, public, and here we've also forced the group to be sudo. And here we have forced the group to be sudo. And we added the comment there. And now we save this, Control S, Control X. At this point in time, you would need to reboot the server. We have now done all the instructions on this page, section 5 and 6 and 7. We now need to open a terminal in our Linux laptop. And we need to go in as root. So sudo su dash. 
it pays to type the right password. Now that I'm in, we can now continue. We want to run this command. However, here, we need to specify the password. And press enter. I missed the step. In the laptop, you had to run this command to create the folder. However, as I was testing it yesterday, I had already created that folder. After that, we then ran this command and specified the root password of the server. The command we ran is a sudo mount command. What we are doing is we are telling the Linux we want to mount this path which is our Samba path or share to this folder here. That's what this command is doing. So now that we've done that, if we list the folder, we should see files in there. There we are, we have files. And for the people that like to work with GUI, I'm going back to my Nikem user having run sudo kaja you will notice it opened the file explorer so i have already a shortcut if you say control l there's the folder i'm interested in and let's create a folder And now let's go and open this on the server. So we open the console. ls-la. And there's the folder we just created. Well guys, this was a very easy installation. I'm sure you will find this useful. We are now using this to back up our YouTube channel videos, please give us a like, subscribe to our channel, so that we can reach our target. And with that, back to you, Josh. Thank you for watching this video, exploring the world of Proxmox turnkey containers, to install in your Proxmox server. Since Proxmox provides many useful turnkey containers, we decided to use one, and we were pleasantly surprised. We got to install the Proxmox turnkey file server container into Proxmox. This provided us with both an NFS file server as well as a Samba server. Running this as a Proxmox container, it is incredibly fast and versatile. If you have not given us a like, please do so. Your dedication to exploring Proxmox's capabilities is invaluable. Stay tuned for more insights, automation, and empowerment through its incredible tools for your home lab. Please like and comment to share your feedback and suggestions for our channel. If you found this video valuable, consider subscribing to stay updated with our latest content and tutorials, ensuring you never miss out on informative videos. Your support is crucial for our channel's growth. For those eager to deepen their knowledge, consider becoming a Patreon supporter for exclusive access to upcoming training courses, enriching your expertise, and supporting the channel. We genuinely appreciate your support and look forward to sharing more enriching content with you. Stay curious, keep exploring, and continue harnessing Proxmox's remarkable potential in your home lab and DevOps journey. Thank you for being part of our community.